Good morning, natural heart doctor friends and followers, cardiac longevitists. I am Dr. Lauren Latanza. I'm naturopath naturopathic physician here at Natural Heart Doctor, um, bringing you day 15 already, halfway through the month of our happy heart month, talking to you today about how air pollution really can serve as a tr common trigger for atrial fibrillation. AFib is the most commonly diagnosed arrhythmia that we see in clinic. We see a lot of it, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, mainstream medical doesn't always get it right and doesn't really dig for the cause all the time. And I'm here to bring you some information about how the air quality that you're surrounding yourself with can certainly contribute to arrhythmias and other health, um, you know, being detrimental to your health otherwise as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope everybody's enjoying Happy Heart Month. We've had so much good information coming to you over the last two weeks. Um, we've still got some more coming your way. I hope that you share uh, your kind of maybe some of your favorite topics that you've had, maybe some things that you feel were missing. Um, if there's anything you want to hear more about, please reach out with questions, comments, um, share with people that you love, people that you like and uh, let them know how their health is being affected by things in their lifestyle. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you. Talking about air quality, air pollution. This is something that, you know, maybe it becomes a little bit discouraging because we're unsure how we can really, um, how can we how can we help this? What can we really do about it? Air pollution is something that we can't really control all of if it's outdoors. You know, it, we might just want to throw our hands up and say, what can I do? You know, the some of the air is just toxic. Maybe you live um, like really in an inner city and you're exposed to more pollutants. Um, or maybe you're a little bit more um, rural and you get some clean air. Um, but I want to talk to you about how even um, living, you know, not having to deal with city life, but sometimes even farther out, what can be inside your home Um that can be contributing to AFib or other cardiac issues as well. I know that Dr. Wolfson talked a lot about mold yesterday, huge, huge um, source of indoor air um, contaminants. So if you missed that, I would highly suggest going back and rewatching yesterday's video um, as another source. So here is some just kind of some sources of pollution, right? So we when we think of poor air quality, we think of pollution, we think mostly, okay, we live in the cities, we've got exhaust fumes, we've got um, all of these different things that are, are coming just from industrialized areas. Um, but that's not always just the case. So of course, you know, um, airplanes, and then we've got cars, trucks, so all of these different exhaust fumes. Um, and then we've got factories, so any sort of power plant or treatments, um, anything that's going to end up aerosolized into the air um, it just goes up and then it comes right back down. So you don't even have to live right next to these stations, um, but they can certainly impact you no matter where you are. Um, then again, out you know, in more rural areas, we've got oil, gas, fertilizer, livestock, um, and then it comes to you know wildfires, forest fires, um, combustion from natural sources even that get into the air and affect our health. Once they wind up aerosolized to a certain particle size, you know, that's where we really um, wind up getting affected by breathing those in. Um, these are also, I'll get back to some of these. So these are some of the indoor sources of um, air contaminants. And um, so again, we typically think of some more, more so of these when it comes to um, poor air quality, but these are some of the indoor sources. So I'll come back to the um, indoor sources. So the research just, I mean, continues to pour out. So this was in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, um, Environmental Research and Public Health. There are just studies and studies pouring out that even acute exposure, so even if it's brief and you're not living in this day in and day out, um, odds of AFib increased by 26% after um, the 24 hours previous to that were increased um, poor air quality. So a lot of this, the, the studies that I'll share with you have um, this here where it says um, particulate matter, and this is 2.5. So I've got a slide explaining why the 
size of the particles are really what's going to be the most detrimental. So the smaller they are, um, the more that they can become into your system. And it's really hard to filter those out. Um, and then, so this was another study that was talking about the poor air quality and emergency room visits being increased within 24 hours. Again, so acute exposure, it just triggers that. I mean, if we think about something like asthma, we know that if we're around something that's going to be inhaled, it's going to trigger um, an onslaught of symptoms. So if you're asthmatic, you know this well. If you um, have an arrhythmia like AFib, maybe it's really a little bit harder for you to identify where these things are coming from because you're recognizing it in your heart and your, um, you know, maybe it's not right away, but within 24 hours, you end up with an arrhythmia. I would really encourage you to think back on, you know, was I exposed to something? Was I, you know, downtown? Was I at an airport? So all of these things that kind of should start running through your mind. Um, again, just more studies. So this was published in Heart and Lung. Um, this was a meta-analysis and their conclusions just say that um, gaseous or particulate pollutants are associated with the increased risk of atrial fibrillation. Um, these are some of these 2.5 micron uh, particulate matter. So some of these um, gases, ozone, nitric oxide, carbon dioxide. So really what it's doing is displacing oxygen in your body. Um, so you're not breathing properly, your, your body's not getting oxygenated enough. Um, and so all of these things are, of course, not good down, down the line. So this is what I was alluding to when it says in these studies that particulate matter, um, particularly this 2.5 microns and smaller. So this is a good depiction of some of these images. So this is the cross-section of a human hair. So one strand of hair we know is a very narrow, um, very narrow. So then there's a, you know, fine piece of beach sand, which we don't think of as all that large either, but comparing that to what we're, uh, what we're looking into as in studying that's being inhaled. So the particulate matter of 10 microns and smaller. So this would be dust, pollen, some of these mold spores like Dr. Wolfson was talking about yesterday that get inhaled. So get into, um, our, lung cavity and then can wind up into our bloodstream and of course affect our heart, our brain, um, you name it downstream. Um, and then we talk about these uh, 2.5 microns and smaller. So it shows if this is uh, 10 microns, it's going to be even that much smaller. So you can imagine how hard it is to um, filter these out of air, right? Um, so combustion particles, organic compounds, metals, um, people might be wondering how metals wind up in air. Um, there have been some heavy metals used in, um, candle wicks historically. So be sure that you're not bringing things into your home that you should not be aerosolizing, that should not be breathed into your air. Um, and I would also encourage you to consider, you know, where you're living, of course. So this was a study done on uh, Dublin, Ireland. They had um, recently, well, I, I think that it was maybe in the late 90s, had um, got rid of some specific kinds of coal burning um, and reductions in respiratory and cardiovasc cardiovascular death rates um, had substantially diminished. And, you know, it's just goes into looking at, again, where you live, what's going on in your area. Um, and so we bring up forest fires. So we're getting in, eventually going to get into summer months. And we know that, so just because the fires are over here, that wind is carried. So this is just the U.S. jet stream. Um, and that winds up going all across the Midwest. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can certainly be affected, even if it's not your state um, that is the concern. Um, all of these things really have uh, downstream effects. So this was um, a, a study done on some of the 2015 California wildfires and um, smoke exposure was associated with cardiovascular and cerebrovascular um, emergency department visits. So being stroke, heart attack, um, arrhythmias, you name it, particularly for those over, um, 20, or over 65 years old. So it just goes to show that this, um, it doesn't have to be just because you're in a city, but all of these naturally occurring um, exposures of air pollution as well. This was, um, I, this is the link here. So um, if anybody's interested, I can type this into the comment section. But this was a map that came up that um, 
shows in real time. So it updated um, all of these locations every like, couple hours or so. Um, and so this is a good way to say, okay, you know what, maybe I know that this isn't the case, but maybe Phoenix has really clean air, but there was something that happened, you know, last week that's making it a poor air quality. Um, so this gives you the air quality index um, all around the globe. You can type in your city um, and it'll pull up what your current air quality is. And it'll give you, I think the last like month worth of data on that specific location. Um, so I kind of was going through, um, this map yesterday as I was pulling some of this information and the highest, um, numbers, the poorest air quality that I found was in India. So in Delhi was the highest number that I found. So you can see like 50, 25, eight, kind of all through here. Um, there was somewhere near Chicago that was around 313, but again, it fluctuates. So it's not always like that. Um, but India was persistently kind of the lowest air quality. And so I looked at, to see what the um, AFib rates in India were. And of course, you know, it just goes hand in hand. The median age of onset, on, um, onset, onset of atrial fibrillation in India is nearly a decade earlier than um, us over here in the West. So it just really goes hand in hand. So I had mentioned lots of sources of outdoor air pollutants and now um, wanted to bring also to indoor because we you know, live and sleep indoors and it's not always just safer to be inside. That's certainly not the case. Um, the EPA has said that indoor air pollutants are often two to five times higher than outdoors because we have poor ventilation. So make sure you're changing your air vents, especially getting um, the HEPA filter um, in your inside air filters so um, that you can filter out some of the outdoor, of course, but then also some of these um, additional indoor air pollutants that we get. So off-gassing from furniture, upholstery, um, VOCs from perfumes, hairsprays. I actually had uh, one of my best friends just sent me this morning that um, a large number of um, dry shampoos are being recalled and taken off of shelves because of the amounts of benzenes that are in those and they are carcinogenic. Um, they affect our lungs, they affect our heart, they affect our brain. So better to just keep those out of your home. Um, again, if it's becoming aerosolized, if it's turning into a fine particle, then that's just becoming more and more risky and higher risk of becoming um, arrhythmatic. So this was a good um, image that I pulled from this website here. Just showing some indoor sources. So molds, of course, like we talked about yesterday, um, anything that's going to be a spray. So the candles, the air fresheners, leave those out of your home. You're so much better without those. Um, but then, you know, even like cooking devices, so stoves, um, gas burning, uh, fire burning fireplaces. So there's, you know, there's something that you just have to kind of look into with everything and make sure that you've got um, a good air filter. These are some other um, sources of VOC, so volatile organic compounds. Um, so paints, preservatives, um, cleaners, and disinfectants. So um, I, tomorrow we're going to be talking about 21 days to a toxin-free life. So it's not just getting organic, you know, produce, but it's very much in terms of like home and body care products like I was talking about last week. Um, we get exposed to all kinds of different things. So make sure that we're not bringing these things into our homes um, because as soon as, you know, it's becoming sprayed or anything that it's, we can inhale, it's going to have downstream effects. Um, so this is, I, we keep bringing up this uh, triple toxin test. If you've been following along and you've been doing, um, you know, some of the challenges and the, getting the word of the day, um, this is what is up for grabs for winning. Um, I pride myself on being good at uh, getting to the bottom of where you might be exposed to these compounds that show up in the environmental toxin test. Um, and so this just shows here. So there's a whole section on this triple toxin. This is the environmental toxin section, but, um, the volatile organic compounds, there's a whole section on those. And so we test your urine, we see what's coming up. Um, there's in these plasticizers and preservatives, some of these, um, will come up as well for, from some of these aerosolized, uh, compounds that I've been talking about. Um, the word of the day is listen. So I hope you've been listening along all for the last couple of weeks and you will continue to listen. So jot that down if you're following along with us. Um, hopefully this has been easy to uh, 
follow and easy to get the words of the day every single day. Um, so I, you know, again, I hate to bring you, I hate to be the bearer of bad news without uh, providing some sort of, you know, what can we do about this? So in this case, it's really just going to be, you know, we can't control the weather, we can't control wildfires, although we certainly do try to decrease the risk. Um, we can try to, you know, do what's best and bring in old, only natural products into our home. But ultimately, there's things that are still going to wind up in our air and we need to just filter those out. So um, just as best you can, I would really encourage everybody to get a medical grade air purifier. Um, we recommend Austin Air. It's, um, again, medical grade, removes 95%, um, and that's 0.1 microns or larger. So the um, microns, like I was saying, is 0.25. So of course, um, it's going to be, you know, catching those particles that are studied to be the um, worst for your health. So the smaller the particle, the harder it is to filter out, which is why you really shouldn't go cheap on an air purifier. Um, this one, actually, I was kind of interested in finding out what the square footage that it covered for your home. So what kind of, how many do you need to get? Do you need to get one for every room? Um, but this Austin air purifier covers uh, 1500 square feet, and that was with an eight foot ceiling. So if you've got uh, a larger home, maybe you're at 3000 square feet, maybe you're going to have one on one end of the house or one upstairs, one downstairs, what have you, but um, there it is on wheels. So if you spend, you know, the nighttime in the bedroom, and then you are in your home office or your kitchen during the day, then just move it around if, um, if that's, if that's your only option. But I would say making sure and cleaning out your air, do not fall victim to the quality of the air, try to really um, gain control of this and put put it in your hands. So that was the end of my slides today. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and um, see which, uh, let's see, we've got good morning from Vancouver. Good morning from AZ, hello everybody. Sunny, hello from Louisiana. We got Cave Creek, we got Texas. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great week. I um, hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day yesterday. Maybe you got some heart healthy chocolate or maybe a little resveratrol from some good red wine. Um, I hope you're all having a great start to your day, great start to your week. Um, I will certainly put, okay, I'll, I will certainly put the um, link to the map. Let me see if I can do that while I've got you on here. Um, if not, then I will go ahead and throw that up there. Absolutely. Okay, so it will, let me do that right now. So I will go ahead and get that um, link on there so you can all check where you live. There was a couple different ones, very interactive. And again, I kind of just went down this air quality bunny hole and searched all around the globe. Um, NYC, I'm sorry. <laughs> we could, you could get, get an air purifier in your home though. Um, but all we can do is our best. So trying to regain some control. And um, I hope that this was informative and not just kind of a downer, um, because there is some control that we can gain. And of course, it's, you know, what you're bringing into your home, making sure you don't have mold, um, searching for products that help um, alleviate some of these um, VOCs that can wind up in your house as well. Uh, word of the day, Emma, yes, the word of the day was listen. Uh, so listen up. All right, everybody. Well, I hope that you have a great start to your day. Um, I'll go ahead and put the link to that map on here and um, you can check out where you're at. Um, I know that we've got a lot of people on here that have the Austin air purifiers and we've got one always running in our office. Uh, wouldn't have it any other way. So I would encourage you to all go to that link. There's um, uh, one just directly through our website. So have a great day, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow.